Wealth, yoga, wine. Welcome to my podcast. I'm Valerie Hale. Forgiveness in the corporate world, in our workplace. Do you know that you can incorporate the law of forgiveness in your business? And it will have a huge impact on your bottom line, on employee morale, and even employee loyalty. The reason being is that when we use the law of forgiveness, it opens up possibilities, new opportunities to grow as a business and in your own personal life. Mary Morrissey had $10 million stolen from her, embezzled by her former husband. Mary Morrissey is the founder of Life Mastery Institute. Back in 2003, she and her congregation were building this amazing center that was going to take $10 million to create. And she knows how to teach people to forgive. What she teaches us is that many people believe that forgiveness is a sign of weakness. It's better to hold grudges and anger and hate. You can see this in the corporate environment. If you're operating on that level, it is going to hurt productivity, your bottom line, employee morale. She also mentions that what we want to learn is that it's the situation that we never wanted. It's the event, it's the betrayal that we didn't ask for. In order to control your mind and your feelings, she offers tools for us. It is not a weakness, not at all, to forgive. Dalai Lama calls these people who we have calls them sacred friends because it takes a lot of work it takes courage in order to employ the tools that Mary Morrissey teaches us and this is the process and it's not easy Mary Morrissey tells us that people learn to forget by maybe millimeter by millimeter it can take years, but start the process, practice it every day. What you want to do is envision someone you really love, who really brings you happiness and joy, that person for whom you're grateful. It can be your children, it can be a spouse, it can be a best friend, it can be a golfing buddy. Get on a higher frequency when you begin to envision this other sacred friend who you feel has betrayed you. Or you're remembering a situation that you're still holding, holding a grudge about. So bring this vision of the people you really love and stay there until you're feeling the gratitude and the love and the appreciation for this person. Gently let that image fade. Then you're going to bring in the image of what Dalai Lama will say is the sacred friend. All this feeling that you had, your best friend, your best spouse, golfing buddy, you're going to imprint on this person. Then you're going to repeat these four statements. May you truly be happy. May you know true peace. May you walk in ways that bring you happiness. May you know love. You must repeat these several times, and it does take practice. I know this is difficult to believe that it works, but I can share with you my own experience with this recently. I own real estate in New York, everything's for sale, and because of COVID in Cuomo with pro-tenant laws, two of my tenants in separate buildings stopped paying rent. I knew they were going to trash the place, but what I kept saying and seeing in my mind were these four statements. May you truly be happy. May you know true peace. 
May you walk in ways that bring you happiness. May you know love. This is very powerful because you're not only transforming these words to those sacred friends, they are coming back to embrace your life. And that's why forgiveness is so powerful because you are now in control of what you're thinking and what you're feeling. Desmond Tutu says, those who think forgiveness is weakness haven't tried it. The other aspect about forgiveness, it's an inner cleansing. Kundalini Yoga. The sound, the science of sound is something that Guru Jagat and my other teacher, Har Prakash, teaches us. They play specific music when we do Kriyas. This music is specific. It can be for prosperity, for abundance. It can be a calming, healing sound. It can be fun and joyous. They have played music for us that they had us jumping around like silly jumping beans, Mexican jumping beans, enjoying this music. The music is very powerful because it also opens neuropathways. Again, dopamine, oxytocin, oxytocin, and serotonin are the happy hormones, and these can be initiated by the right sounds of music. Yogi Bhajan, who brought Kundalini Yoga over from India a gazillion years ago, teaches us that it usually takes 40 days to change a habit, change an addiction. I am of the belief, and so is Guru Jagat, that when you find a Kriya that works, just do it. Do it every day. Do it for the rest of your life. This set, this virtual class that I have on the podcast details is one of my favorite that I had just started studying with Guru Jagat virtually before she unexpectedly died. And I'm going to keep putting it up in hopes that other people will start practicing this. I have mentioned that when you combine Kundalini Yoga with Mary Morrissey's teachings or Matt Boggs or Bob Proctor, you have created an orbit of wealth and abundance, prosperity, happiness, health that surpasses your wildest dreams. Lastly, wine. September me is a little sad because in New York <laughs> it's the end of summer. I lived there for 29 years. That's where my investment property is. Somebody buy it, please. I'm ready. Therefore, it's still in my DNA to be a little sad when September rolls around. Luckily, I drink rosés, however, all year long. Others don't. They think that also spring and summer is the end of rosé season. I will be sharing with you folks, from now until eternity, great rosé wines to drink all year long. And I would call these next three wines, you may think of them as end of summer rosés, but they're not. They're all year round. But let's just say September is the end of rosé season, just to humor the masses. There is a wonderful wine store in St. Petersburg called Fourth and Vine. Edith knows her wine. She grew up in a family who operated a liquor store in St. Pete Beach. Her palate is exceptional. The three wines that I love is Paul D. It is from Austria. The grape is the varietal is Zweigelt. It's delicious by itself, but it's also delicious with more of your summer fare. You know, I like the olives, the tapas. You can do a cream sauce with this, but it's actually a little bit delicate. It does love grilled vegetables. You know, I'm the vegetarian. Very versatile. No, nothing heavy with these foods, though. If you were going to do a nice grilled fish with dill or something like that, it would be absolutely perfect. And that's about $17. The next one is Miriana. That is from Portugal. I love Portuguese wines. Also, in, oh, Paul D is in a liter, which is a great price for a $17 bottle of wine. The Mariana is from Portugal. The varietals are Espadero and Podero. Wonderful wine because 
It is also versatile, not quite as delicate as the Paul D. It has a very vibrant cranberry and mild strawberry flavors. Again, you can do light grilled meats, even though I'm a vegetarian. You could do a nice, simple chicken. Again, grilled vegetables is always the fair. I do like Mexican food with this. Guacamole is great with this one, too. Last one, Vermont d'Alsace. So that's a rosé that's sparkling. And Alsace is not known for any red wines except Pinot Noir. So that is going to be the grape that is predominant. Well, it's the only grape, the varietal, that's in Vermont d'Alsace. Rosés do have a tendency to be a little bit... Um, sparkling rosés have a tendency to be a little more pricey. And that is about $25. In conclusion, forgiveness deserves to have a home in daily practice in the corporate world. Let your employees know that hate and grudges will not work in a corporate environment. Let's start a new world order with the law of forgiveness. Remember, it's an inner cleansing. Kundalini Yoga Play some yoga music at work. My goodness. Send me an email. I'd be happy to... Um, I'll, I'll put some on the podcast details, of course. Powerful music, cleansing, calm, serenity, prosperity, and abundance. And lastly, wine. Some people look at September as the end of rosé season. I will never let you down. I will always include a rosé sometime in the, in the following months. Well, for eternity. And lastly, I am not a life consultant. I am not a life coach. I produce these podcasts on a weekly basis to help hundreds of people globally. And I would love it if you signed up for one of Mary or Matt's multi-week programs because you will learn so much information and improve your life in immeasurable ways. And that's how I get paid. Merci.